How many would agree we got a lot of giants in the land right now? And, 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 and if, if you don't know them, I could name about 50 or 100 of them probably for you. They're, 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 what's going on in our schools right now? They're, they're trying to take our children from us. I mean, that, the, the target is to destroy our youth. And, 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 and it's, it's in an in article that you can read for yourself. The, in D.C. area, they're, they're making a move in the schools there. They're, they're going to be teaching everything but what school is about. They're going to be teaching racism. They're going to be teaching uh, you know, sex education. And, and I'm talking about in, in the little, little grades. And, 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 and then on, on other fronts, you know, this year you're going to be able to get manufactured, you know, grown, lab-grown meat chicken and pork and stuff. I mean, I'm sure that's going to really be good for us. And I don't even know that you'll know when it's happening. You know, the devil's on a rampage, and, 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 and like I say, everything that is good is being called evil, and everything that is evil is being called good. And there's giants in the land, and, and, and I, I, I hate to admit this, but in my natural mind, I don't see no way to stop it. But I'm glad it's not about my natural. It's about God's supernatural. And I'm telling you, one breath and he can turn it around. And I think he's starting to breathe on us, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So I want you to turn in, in, a, in a, and this is going to be an old story. And I hope you don't turn it off because it's not, this book is an old book. Y'all know that? This is an old book. And I don't care if you heard this story before. I think the Lord can give it fresh revelation for you. So if you'll turn to 1 Samuel chapter 16, and, and, and we're going to talk about where David went against Goliath, and that was a giant. But I want to prove to you that there's a giant slayer in you. Amen. That went all really good. I'm going to try to prove it to you. Maybe you'll pay attention. You'll, there is a giant slayer down inside of us. It's there already. Amen. Well, we'll pick up, we'll read, uh, I'm going to pick up in 16, and because I, I hate to try to back tell the story, so we, we know where God had got done with Saul. And so he sent him out with his horn of oil to go anoint a new king. And we'll pick up uh, in verse 11 of chapter 16. And Samuel said unto Jesse, Are there, are here all thy children? And he said, There remain yet their youngest. And behold, he keepeth the sheep. And Samuel said to Jesse, Send and fetch him, and we will not sit down till he come hither. And he sent and brought him in, and he was ready and with all of a beautiful countenance and a goodly to, to look to. And the Lord said, Arise and anoint him. Now listen to this word. For this is he. And Samuel took the horn of oil. They didn't anoint like we anoint. Uh, Jody got pretty close to anointing like, like we anoint right there. He just didn't have a big enough bottle. Remember, he popped the lid off that and poured oil all over and, and, and when he was anointing, well, that, they anointed the oil ran. And, and, and so he anointed him. I want you to look where he anointed him. He said, uh, and he anointed him in the midst of his brethren. And, and look at this. And the spirit of the Lord came upon David from that day forward. So Samuel rose and went to Ramoth. Okay, and, and then I'll, I'll just kind of skip a little bit through there, but, but I want to come down to verse 18. It said, then answered one of the servants, well, no, I'm not going to skip. I, if, if, if I preach over today, I'll go longer next week and make up for it. <clears throat> but the spirit of the Lord departed from Saul, verse 14, and an evil spirit from the Lord troubled him. And Saul's servant said unto him, behold now, an evil spirit from God troubles thee. Let our Lord now command thy servants which are before thee to seek out a man who is a cunning player of the harp and it shall come to pass that when the evil spirit from God is upon thee, he shall play with his hands and thou shalt be well. And Saul said unto his servant, provide me now a man that can play well and bring him to me. And verse 18, I don't, I've never heard nobody preach too much on verse 18, but I want to tell you, there's some meat in verse 18. Then answered one of the servants and said, Behold, I have now, I have seen the son of Jesse, the Benjamite, that is a cunning player 
a mighty man of valor, a man of war. Talking about a teenager now, this, this, what is anointed about him? He's the spirit of the Lord's on him. And, and, and this is a pretty good resume, I think. He's a cunning player, a man of, a, a mighty valiant man, a man of war and prudent in matters and comely person and the Lord is with him. That's a pretty good resume right there, Alan. I wish mine was half that. And, and the Lord is with him. Wherefore Saul sent messenger to Jesse and sent, send me David thy son, which is with the sheep. What was he doing? He was still keeping the sheep. Anointed to be king. Spirit of the Lord's on him. Got wisdom and knowledge, but he's doing the menial job of keeping sheep. And, and so the king sent for him. That would get to a lot of guys' head, but it didn't get to David. He said, and David came to Saul and stood before him, and he loved him greatly, and he became his armor bearer. And Saul sent to Jesse, saying, Let David, I pray thee, stand before me, for he has found favor in my sight. And it came to pass when the evil spirit from God was upon Saul that David took his harp and played with his hand. So Saul was refreshed as well, and the evil, de evil spirit departed from him. So here's a man who's anointed to be king, got great wisdom, and, and, and so anointed that he can drive away evil spirits by playing. That's, a, that's a, quite a guy. But in the meanwhile, you, you know, we, we'll, we'll pick up, you, you can, I'm not gonna read all that right there, but you, you can read where the Philistines gathered together their army to come to battle and, and, and they, they come down and verse three said, in, in chapter 17, and the Philistines stood on one mountain on one side and Israel stood on the mountain on the other side and there was a valley between them. And there came out a champion of the camp of the Philistine called Goliath of Gath. And he was, I'm gonna to cut to the chase right there, he was over nine feet tall. And he had a helmet of brass up on his head and his coat of armor weighed about 125 pounds and his spear was huge. And what's all that about? It's about to try to bring fear and it was doing a good job. Everybody looked on him. You know, he, they was afraid. And, and I tried to do, I, I thought about trying to do some sort of comparison, but you, in, in our day and time, you know, Manute Ball, I think, is probably about the tallest player. You know, Shaquille O'Neal was like 7'4", something like that. Well, if you could imagine Shaquille O'Neal, he could be standing down there on the floor, and Goliath could be, or, or, or I'll do it this way, let Goliath stand there on the floor, and Shaquille O'Neal could be standing right here, and he'd still be looking up to him. That's how big that guy was, 13 or 9 feet tall, or better, now, some say 9.6, or you have to weigh the, the span. But anyways, <clears throat> and, and verse eight says, and he stood and cried unto the armies of Israel and said unto them, why are you come out to set your battle in array? Am not I a Philistine, and you servants of Saul, choose you a man for you and let him come down to me. And if I be able, and if he be able to fight with me and kill me, then we will be your servants. But if I prevail against him and kill him, then you shall be our servants and serve us. Let me tell you the fight that we're in today is not about us. If we lose this battle, it's about her. It's, it's about you. It's about our children. And it's about their children. We're not fighting this about just for us. Say, well, I, I just choose to be an onlooker. You ain't gonna have no choice about being an onlooker. We're gonna fight in this battle. Amen. So then the Philistine said, I defy the armies of Israel this day. Give me a man that we may fight together. And Saul and all of Israel heard these words of the Philistines and they were dismayed and greatly afraid. And now David, the son of the Ephraimite of, the, of Bethlehem, Ham, Judah, whose name was Jesse, had eight sons. And the man went among the men for an old man in the days of Saul. 
His three eldest sons of Jesse went and followed Saul to the battle to name his three sons, Eli and Abinadab and Shammah. And David was the youngest and, and the three eldest sons followed Saul. But now, now here's verse 15. I don't understand. The, the battle's already taken out and David had been with Saul. But look, look in verse 15. He said, but David went and returned from Saul to feed his father's sheep. Jerry, this, this is something else. You know, he's, he's been anointed to be king. He was a sheep keeper. He went to the castle and was playing the harp and, and, and driving away demons and, 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 and was being used of God there. But then he goes back to keeping his sheep, a humble servant of the Lord, his father's sheep at Bethlehem. And the Philistine drew near morning and evening and presented himself for 40 days. So twice a day, they heard this blasphemy come out of his mouth and David is back with his daddy. So, and Jesse said unto David, his son, take now thy brethren an ephon of parched corn and these 12 loaves and run to the camp of the brethren. Now, let me tell you something, it's been pretty easy to say, do what? Do you know who you're talking to? You're talking about to the future king. You're talking about the one that can drive away. You want me to run some cheese and crackers down to the line. Is that what you, but that wasn't David's heart. In order for him to be used of God the way he's going to be used of God, he had to have a right attitude. He had to be have a submission to his authority. His daddy was his authority. And he humbly did what he was told. Amen, David. That's a good point. Thank you. <laughs> By the way, if folks don't need to be concerned about my coughing. I, I went and got tested. I do not have any contagious thing. I just got some coughing. So, <clears throat> so Jesse, well, he said, now carry and carry these 10 cheeses and do the captains of the thousands and look how the brethren fare and take their pledge. Just, and I, I looked it up in different places. That just mean bring me back a report of what's going on. Now Saul and all the, the men of Israel were in the valley of Elam fighting with the Philistines. And David rose up early in the morning. He didn't tarry around and he left the sheep with the keeper. He was still responsible. He didn't just go off and leave his sheep. He put somebody in charge. And he went and Jesse, as Jesse had commanded him, and he came to the trench where the host was going forth to fight and they shouted for the battle. And Israel and the Philistines had put a battle in array, army against army. So army against army was fighting. And David left his carriage in the hand of the keeper of the carriage and ran into the army and came and saluted his brethren. And as he talked with them, behold, there came up a champion. The the Philistine of Gath, Goliath by name, out of the armies of the Philistines, and he spake according to the same words, but there's something different this time. David heard them. Amen. Oh, God, help us, Lord, to hear some words today, oh, Lord God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And all of Israel, when they saw the man, fled from him and were so afraid. And the men of Israel had said, have you seen this man that has come up? Surely to defy Israel, he has come up. And it shall be that the man who killeth him, the king will enrich him with great riches, will give him his daughter, and will make his father house free in Israel. Won't have to pay no taxes. And David sake the men that stood by him saying, what shall be done? Tell me again, what shall be done to the man who killeth the Philistine, who taketh away the reproach of Israel? For, now listen to this, he's already starting to put his plan together. Who is this uncircumcised Philistine? uncircumcised. The circumcision was a symbol of what? Covenant. So David was saying, 
I have been in covenant relationship with God since I was eight days old. Who is this dummy that's putting all this stuff out of his mouth? And there was something. I wish we'd understand that we have a covenant even better than David's covenant. Down inside of us is some blessings and some power just waiting to be released. I heard, I heard this uh, lady speaking and she was talking about, said when her son was got to be five years old, he, he got a tooth loose. And I, not, I couldn't help but think about uh, Tiana. No, not Tiana, the Abigail. We had Abigail and they left her with us for some reason and she got a loose tooth. And boy, she, she worked and she got that tooth out. And, 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 and so Pastor Christian called me and said, Pastor David said, if you could. He said, we have a tradition. He said, we let her think that two fairies putting something in, under their pillow. So, so could you put her $2 inflation? You know, infl How many when you was a kid, if you got anything, it was a quarter or a dime or... or well, so anyways, this lady is telling us, Priscilla is her name, and, and she said uh, when her son was five, he shook his tooth until he finally got it loose because he was looking for some treasure. He said, so said he never could get him to go to bed, but that night he couldn't wait. He dove into bed and said, he, and he put that under his pillow and said about every five seconds, he lifted that pillow up to look underneath it. But when he finally went to, to bed, said the six foot two, 250 pound tooth fairy that I sleep with, Said he went in there and he said he put some treasure under the pillow. Now listen, I'm not. This story is going to have a spiritual meaning. So just just hold on for a minute. He said the next morning said I heard such a commotion up there. I knew the treasure had been found. He said my five year old come running down with his fist clenched tight like that right there. Said Mama, said treasure has come. <laughs> said she will show me. Opened his hand, he had some gummy bears, you know. Is that what he or what he really liked? And he turned over his hand and he had a $5 bill. $5 bill. She said, you know, the look on my face, my husband could tell that I wasn't happy. So I was trying to be happy for the boy. But in my day, it was a quarter. <laughs> she said, so when he went away, the kids went away, he said, come to his honey, he said, I, I could tell you was a little trouble for the $5. She said, yes. Do you remember when we had his birthday party and said all, and said we have birthday parties, his mom, my mom, uncles and aunts and cousins, they all come and said about all of them brought a card and a $5 bill. So I went in and she remember we put that money up for him in the drawer in there. So I went inside the drawer and got one of his $5. Said he was celebrating a gift that was already his. Lord God, if we ever get to understanding what gift we got down here that we can already celebrate. I'm going to show you that David understood. I'm, I'm going to show you David understand it, but I want us to understand it. I want us to understand where we are and who we are and whose we are. <coughs> Thank you, Lord. <coughs> Said, for who is this uncircumcised Philistine that he should defile the armies? of the living God. And the people answered him saying, so, thank you, Jerry. I hope I don't become too disruptive with, but I, I want to get this message out if I got to whisper it out. And the people answered him after the same manner saying, so shall it be with the man that killed him. So, now David is already, something's working down inside of him because he knows he's in covenant and he knows that fool isn't. And, he's, and, and let me tell you something else. Everybody else had their gaze on the giant. David had his gaze on God. <laughs> Try that again. They was looking at the giant. The longer you looked at the giant, the bigger giant. And by the way, they was in the trenches. Now, if that guy looked big, Irwin looks big when I, this is the only guy in the church I have to look up to right there. I, I, and, and he looks big, so you, you usually notice if I talk to Irwin, I stand like this. <laughs> Thank you, Andy. She clapped her hand right there. So, 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 but, but anyways, but just imagine how tall he'd look if I was down in a hole in the ground right here 
and looking up at him. A guy nine feet tall and you're in a trench. He really, but, and it's working just exactly he wants it to work because fear and intimidation. Yeah. And I want to tell you something, fear and intimidation didn't end when Goliath got killed. There's still plenty of fear and intimidation that, that goes around yet today. But, but anyways, he, he, uh, he won't know about what we're going to do to stop that. But, and then you would think that his brother, and, and by the way, I already pointed out to you, it was in the midst of his brother. So his brother knew this was, this was the man that was anointed to be king. But listen to his pitiful attitude. And Eli, his eldest brother, heard when he spake unto the men, and Eli's anger was kindled against David, and he said, Why camest thou down hither? And with whom hast thou left a few sheep? All you're good for is taking care of a few sheep in the wilderness. I know thy pride, the naughtiness of thy heart. Thou art come down that thou might have seen the battle. And David said, what, I have done, what have I done? Is there not a cause? He, he was trying to get him. It, it, and there's something to do about this fool over here. It, and there a reason, and there a cause. And, and they, he said, that, and he turned from him to another and spake the, the same manner, and the people answered him again. Let me tell you what he was doing. He wasn't focusing on the battle. He was focusing on the reward. I'm going to do that again. He wasn't focusing on the battle. He was focusing on the reward. When we all get to heaven, what a day. And that, that's, there's going to be some rejoicing then. And it'll be okay to start focusing a little bit more on when we get there. There's a reward coming for those. But I, I ain't waiting I get to heaven to start having some victory. Amen. You say, what? Well, I don't want to ask this question, but I'm going to tell you there's giant slayers in this room. So, well, you know, I don't know if I want to go. No, you, I'm not talking about what you're going to do. I'm talking about what you already have done. You know, Mike right there, leukemia should have got you. COVID should have got you. But some way or another, they didn't get you because something still down inside you said, no, no, not here, not now, not my time. You know, Lois, I, I, I always celebrate. I mean, Lois's health is better now than when COVID hit her. And she, just in case you all don't know, she's old enough that COVID should have and almost did get her, but God delivered her. So she is a giant slayer. The devil thought he had many of us many times. You know, Austin, he thought he had you, but your future is looking bright, praise God, because you endured and you came through and the best is ahead, glory to God. So there is a giant slayer in us. Okay. And when the word was heard which David spake, they rehearsed them before Saul and sent for him. And Saul said, and David said unto Saul, let no man's heart fail because of this fool. That's David Thompson translation. Thy servant will go and fight with this Philistine. I'm going to take you back something. I've never heard nobody take me back there. This, this came off the page of me. And Saul said to David, oh yeah, I know you can do it. No, no, his brother told him, what are you doing down here? You ain't good for nothing except keeping a few sheep. And this is what Saul said to David. Thou art not able to go against the Philistine to fight with him, for thou art a youth. And he was a warrior from his youth. What happened in this verse over here in verse 18, chapter 16, verse 18? Behold, I have seen in Jesse the Bethlehemite a cunning playing and a mighty man of valor, a man of war, prudent in all manners, a comely person, and the Lord's with him. I wonder why Saul didn't think about that. That was told to Saul. That's what he needed to know about. He didn't know about how big David was. He didn't know about whether he was good looking or not. All he needed to know was he was a cunning man, a man of war, and God was with him. He said, yeah, well, that was him. Well, let me tell you something about us. Greater is he that's in you than he that's in the world. The Lord said that he had a plan and a purpose for your life and a plan. Let me read that to you out of Jeremiah. Jeremy, if you put up Jeremiah 29 and verse 11, I think it is. Praise the Lord. Jeremiah. 29, 11, 12, and 13, I think. For I know my thoughts, I think, towards you, saith the Lord. Thoughts of peace, not of evil, to give you an expected end. 
And then shall you call upon me, and you shall go and pray unto me, and I will hearken to you. Come on, verse the next one. And you shall seek me and find me, and you shall search for me with all, with all your heart. <coughs> Thank you, Lord. <coughs> well, and then he says, I, the thief come but to kill and destroy, but I'm come that you might have life and you might have it more abundant. Go to Ephesians chapter two. I, I, some of y'all look like you're bored. I, I, I wish to God that the Lord would call every one of y'all to preach and let you try to have a word of the Lord right here and, and, and have a burden on your heart trying to get a message across and look at people. And by the way, you, you won't have no choice about when the battle comes your way. You're going to get to fight in the battle. In Ephesians 2, verse 1, and this is the last place I'm proving this is what's in us. This is this was our Tuesday night. Our ladies are a week ahead of us. This is what we had Tuesday night. <clears throat> and you hath he quickened, which were, I ain't no more, which were dead in trespasses and sin. Go ahead. Wherein times past, he, you walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, and the spirit that worketh in the children of disobedience, among whom also we had our conversation in time past in the lust of the flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind, and, and were by nature the children of wrath, even as others. It's going to get better in a minute, church. But God who is rich in mercy and his great love wherein he has loved us, even when I was dead in sins, hath quickened us together with Christ, for by grace are you saved, That's right. and hath raised us up together and made us to sit in heavenly places in Christ Jesus, that in the ages to come he might show you the riches and exceeding of his grace, which is kindness toward us in Christ Jesus, verse eight. For by grace you are saved through faith, not of yourself. It's a gift of God. Amen. So it sounds like we're equipped. So these enemies, these giants, again, I, 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 this is not political. Our nation, Democrats and Republicans have gone into ditch. It's time for the church the called out one. I'm not talking about the church of God, the assembly of God, the first Baptist, the, the called out one, the, the ecclesia, the one that the Lord, the, the one he quickened and he made alive. It's time for them to rise up and say, not no more. Yeah. Hey, you know, Biden's lazy. We've got the most inclusive administration. He talked about gays and lesbians and all this stuff. That's not what America is. This is a, that's our house. They got a fence around our house up there. The White House is fenced in. It's supposed to be our house. Well, anyways, David wasn't willing to let this guy run rampant over that. So we'll go back to where we was at here, if I can find where we was at here. So Saul just finished up this story. And David said to Saul, thy servant kept thy, verse 34, kept thy father's sheep. And there came a line, COVID, stroke, car wreck. Joyce was just in a car wreck, told her car, but didn't total her. I just want you all to see that everybody don't have to be super now. You have, God has already delivered some giants into your hand already, things that could not, should not have happened, and you are victorious over it. Yes. Thank you, Lord. I'm, I'm, I'm trying to hurry. I, I'm trying to quit here. So, And he went out after him. I went out after him, and I smote him and delivered him out of his mouth. And he rose against me. I caught him by his beard and smote him and slew him. Thy servant slew both the lion and the bear. And this uncoveted Philistine shall be as one of them, seeing he hath defied 
the armies of the living God. David said, moreover, the Lord that delivered me out of the paw of the lion and out of the paw of the bear, he will deliver me out of the hand of this Philistine. And Saul said to David, go and the Lord be with thee. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I want some of y'all get, get some past victories in your mind. I want you to know that when you should have been gone, you ain't. Glory to God. Okay, so Saul armed David with his armor. He might as well, he wasn't going to use it. And he put the helmet of brass upon his head and he armed with a coat of mail. And David girded himself with the sword of his armor and he was swayed to go for he had not proved it. David said, Saul, I cannot go with these. He wasn't going to win with the strength of his battle. He's going to win with that anointing, anointing of God that was on him. Oh, God, help us today. So David put them off, it said, and he took his staff in his hand and he chose five smooth stones out of the brook. Those stones had been laying in that brook for a while and the water running over them had, had made them smooth. He's getting ready to go fight the biggest man in the land and he's picking him up five stones. Now, I've heard preachers say, well, he thought he was going to take him down. If he missed four times, he was doing not That wasn't it. He had four brothers. He, when he went, he planned on taking out the whole family if he needed to. He did. I don't think it ever occurred to him that he was going to miss. Well, a lion and a bear, and, and, and I, it doesn't say I killed a lion and didn't I kill the bear. It said the lion and the bear. I think he took both of them out. But it didn't matter. And he put them in his shepherd bag, which he had, even in a scrip, and a sling was in his hand, and he drew near to the Philistine. And the Philistine came on and near unto David, and the man that bare his shield went before him. The Philistine was so huge, but he still had somebody else carrying his shield. And when the Philistine looked about and he saw David, he was, dis he was offended that David, this little runt in his way of thinking, was coming and he said, for he was but a youth and ruddy and fair complexion. And when the Philistine said unto David, I am I a dog that thou come to me with stays? And boy, this, he'd already messed up enough, but he, now he really said, and he cursed David. The Philistine cursed David by his little G gods. And the Philistine said to David, come to me and I will give thy flesh to the fowls of the air and to the beasts of the field. Then said David to the Philistine, Thou comest with me with a sword and with a spear and with a shield, but I come to you in the name of the Lord, the God of the armies of Israel, which thou hast defiled. This day will the Lord deliver thee into my hands and I will smite thee and I will take thy head from thee and I will give thy carcass to the host of the Philistine this day and to the fowls there and to the wild beasts of the earth and all the earth may know that there is a God in Israel. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. And all the assembly shall know that the Lord saveth not with a sword or spear for the battle is the Lord's. Gator, that ain't the last battle the Lord fought, and that ain't the last battle he intends to fight. What this thing is going on in America today, that is not our battle. It's the Lord's battle, because they defy the living God, and it's time for the church to rise up, stiff in your back, and say, not no more. Hallelujah. I see something else David understood. His battle wasn't just a victory for him. This is a victory for the whole nation. And if we could ever see that when we, if we will stand in this battle and fight, I don't have no little kids. My grandkid is 30. But I'm telling you, I, I struggle with this thing. I don't want to see her next older sister 
This is the boss baby here. Yes. <laughs> we five baby. All right. Maya comes to me last week. She come bouncing up here, and it was Valentine's Day. And she she opened Valentine's and said, "This is Valentine's card," and she scribbled it. Looked the same to me all across. This right here says, "I love my mommy and daddy," and then I this right here says, "I love what they call Papa or Popsy and what." Anyways, and she read on down. And I said, "What does it say?" I love pastor. And she went right back right there and said, I love pastor. <laughs> My heart beats heavy for that little girl. When she tells me if her dog's feeling bad. I mean, she, she wants pastor to know what's going on. I'm not willing to stand by and watch a bunch of lunatics destroy our children. And we have the power. Everybody say, I've got the power. I am a giant slayer. I mean, get it down in your heart. I am a giant slayer. Why? Because they're greater. I'm, I'm partaking of a better covenant made upon better promise than what David had. But David understood at eight years old there was a covenant cut for him and because he was a covenant child, that giant didn't have no right. Much more we are in better shape. Well, let me just quit right here. Should I, can, I, can I have... He told me to do that, Jeremy. Uh, okay. So then it came to pass when the Philistines rose and he came and drew near to meet David. Remember when I preached this, it's time to move? You Remember that message? Nothing didn't happen until somebody moved. When the priest, when the water was raging, and it was flood time. The waters kept raging in flood time until the priest stepped into the edge of water. The water laid down. When, 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 they was, when Pharaoh's army was behind them and, and, and they was closed in, there wasn't no place for them to go. There wasn't nothing. But when, when Moses moved the rod, the sea parted. Nothing doesn't happen until somebody moves and David had some movement down in his feet. So, so when he saw Goliath raising up, he jumped up his feet and he ran. Everybody else was running too, but they would run one way. They would run the other way. And he was running toward the giant and he was loading up his little sling. Yeah. And like a guided missile right between that ugly man's head. And, and I can't help but think about that. If, if you get, I have an officer in the building and, and, and we'll use your expertise, Ethan. If you would pull out that weapon on your side and you'd shoot me right there with it, would I fall towards you or would I go that way? And it's going to... But yet when he got hit, he said or he fell on his face. I believe the Lord, I wouldn't been able to do this a long time. Slapped him in the back of his head. <laughs> and just one little later. Put God just knocked him flat. Amen. But let me tell you something else. I, I, the Lord gave me this long, long time ago when I used to drill so many drug addicts. A lot of times we knock our enemy down, but we let him lay. David wasn't good at that. He jumped. David ran again, jumped up on him, pulled out that huge sword, and chopped his ugly head off. And he didn't leave his head later. He picked that ugly thing up and took it with him. That represented everything evil. All those statements being made, it's now hanging on the spirit. It ain't doing nothing to nobody no more. Hallelujah. Well, as we face the giants that we're facing, and there's so many of them. I, Jeremy, I don't think this is going to do no better, but would you come on to the piano? Shall I switch, shall I switch Max? Uh, I'll just smack you again. Uh, thank you, Lord. Well, I'm not going to let the, the devil interfere with this altar call 
And I don't know. I don't know if this made any sense to you or not. But I pray it did. He said, well, Pastor, I'm not facing no giants. Well, think about your neighbor. How many know somebody that's, that's got addicted? People's got addicted children, grandchildren, brothers, sisters, daughters, cousins. I mean, and they're addicted. And they're, not, they're no longer 15 or 16 or 18. They're, they're 50. And they don't have no will to live. And, and, and they're even doing the crazy drug that's killing people. We don't hear much about it, but, you know, thousands on thousands of thousands of people are dying on fentanyl every day. Our borders are wide open to it. That's a, that's a giant that needs to come down. Your police officers used to just be for our protection. Now you got to try to revive you know, these people when they do overdoses. It, it, it's, it's, there's so much put on police officers. I'm, I'm, I've known him since he was a, just a kid, and, and I'm so proud of Ethan. And, and he, you know, that, that it, I don't know why you do it, but I'm thankful that, that people do this. Every time I see a policeman, I don't know what you do, but anytime I get taught when I try to thank them for what they do, you know, we've, we've maligned our police officer to the point that they can't hire hiring anymore. And once they're retiring, I, and they, they're mistreated. Yes, they, there's some bad police officers, but there are millions of good ones, and we need to celebrate them. But there's so many giants, and they look so big to you. I never was hooked on drugs, but I've, I've sure ministered a lot of people that were. And Alan, that's his, one of his testimonies. There's a hopelessness that goes with that. And there's a place, the reason why so many of them overdoses, they're so hopeless they don't care anymore anyways. They think it can't be much worse. There's something worse than drug addiction. But it's a giant that needs to be slain. And for, and for our school systems, it's a giant that needs to be slain. And for the churches in America that are making a compromise to where there's not much difference between the world and the church. God help us that we stand true to the cross. And I pray that the spirit of repentance would break it. Let it start in me, Lord. So whatever your giant is, I want you to know that God has already deposited the treasure that's down inside of you that is powerful enough to break whatever addiction, whatever giant that there is rising up. He cannot stand just as the giant went down when David didn't come at him in his good looks. He didn't come at him in his natural ability. He came at him in the name of the Lord. The name of the Lord is a strong tower the righteous run into it and they're saved. Would you all stand to your feet? Father, I know, Lord, that under the sound of my voice that there's folks here, Lord, that feel just as hopeless as that drug addict that's about to take his last breath. Lord, they've tried and they've tried and they've turned this way and they've turned that way and they tried this and they repented and they prayed that and they did this and they did that Lord but nothing hadn't worked but let, yet word, your word I just read to us Lord God that you had a plan and a purpose for our, their lives before they was before you allowed them to be in their mother's womb Lord you had a plan for them so I pray Father Lord manifest that plan just as David kept looking on the prize Lord today Lord let them get their eyes off of the giant Lord and get their eyes on the prize Lord the prize of forgiveness, the prize of redemption, Lord, the prize of a redeemed life, Lord God. God, for others of us, Lord, that we fight battles of sickness, Lord, or we fight battles of family members with sickness, Lord God, and have wrestled that giant for so long, and the giant said, I'm not giving up, I'm not giving up, Lord. But God, today, Lord, may they see, Lord, the giant will give up because he has no choice because we come in the name of that shakes the earth, the name of Jesus. And we declare, Lord, that the giant will die, Lord, in the hallelujah. So Lord, may every giant be brought low today, Lord God. 
So I pray, Lord, in Jesus' name, whatever the need, Lord, whether the giant is sickness, whether the giant is addiction, whether the giant is fear, whether the giant is oppression, fear, whatever it is, Lord God, I pray, Father, may they realize, Lord, that we got hidden treasures that's just waiting to be drawn upon, Lord. So in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, Lord, as they sing and prepare, Lord God, this, this, this song, Lord God, may you release them to come. Lord, don't let anything hinder them, Lord. Like you did Eleanor, Lord, at 11, God. You released her. Conviction came, Lord, and she ran, Lord, to the outhouse. Lord, let them run to the altar. Let them run for hope. In Jesus' name.